Historical pieces aren't something you normally associate with anime. Don't get me wrong, stories set in, say, the Age of the Samurai are about as easy to come across as the air we breathe. But a story fully devoted to the retelling of an almost entirely non-fiction, ancient part of history, tossing aside the glorified samurai and bushido code for genuine insights into ancient Japanese politics, isn't all that frequent. And perhaps that's exactly why Heike Monogatari, the tale of the Heike, immediately stood out to me amidst the many great anime airing right now. And I will preface with the fact that Heike Monogatari is, at the end of the day, based on a full-length Japanese epic and real history collected over time by oral tradition of Biwa playing bards. Meaning that there are a lot of characters, dozens of moving political pieces, and the expectation that you can keep up with remembering the numerous Japanese figures involved at this point in history, like Taira no Kiyomori and Goshira Kawatenno. But if you are willing to take that burden and really put in the effort to watch Heike Monogatari, I think that the stunning art style, emotionally charged story about family and the hardships of living in the political realm, and wonderfully immersive atmosphere of the show will leave you with an unforgettable experience. The story follows a young fictional girl in the midst of the Genpei War, a period of civil war between the Taira and the Minamoto clan. The Taira clan, also known as the Heike, hold immense authority over Japan. And when the young girl slips up and accidentally disrespects them, her father pays the price of that crime with his life. Just to give you a taste of how serious things were taken and how drastically it could go wrong. Soon afterwards, as if by the strings of fate itself, the girl is found by Taira no Shigemori, the eldest son of the Taira clan. But instead of being the arrogant, power-hungry royal that we expect him to be based on the Heike members we've seen thus far, Shigemori is the exact opposite. After hearing the girl's story about her father, Shigemori vows to take her in instead of letting her be killed. That is, only after witnessing the power of the girl's eye. That the girl can actually see the person in front of her's future with one of her eyes, and that with Shigemori she saw the downfall of him and the Taira clan, and the rise of a new ruling power in Japan. But Shigemori, instead of feeling shocked or refusing to believe the girl's words about this, actually trusts her, because Shigemori has a power in his eye too he can see the spirits of the dead. Shigemori is always reminded of the toll of war, the lives that have been taken by his clan and the terrible deeds that one must do to rise to power, himself included. And thus, after taking in the girl named Biwa afterwards, we continue to follow the lives of one of the Heike's most vital families, and the happiness and sorrow that being a powerful family brings in one of Japan's most tumultuous periods. Now, I realize that from this small plot synopsis, it doesn't seem to be the totally historic piece I made it out to be at the very beginning, but Biwa, the main character, is really the only purely fictional part of this tale. But it's one that is also very important to the story. Biwa offers this outside view of everything going on. With her eyes, she can see the future of people, the futures we know they have historically, but it makes it clear that she doesn't tell people about the future because it's dangerous. She sees the politics unfold and knows how things will ultimately happen, but at the same time is emotionally connected to everyone. Biwa is so important to this story being this fictional character with the ability to see the often horrifying future of these people to bring the characters together. Because there's so many moving parts and so many different historical figures, having Biwa and the plotline she drives with Shigemori and his family is very important to keeping this anime from doing too much. Because I know if we were simply to follow all of these characters with no central plot, it would get not only confusing, but pretty boring. Instead of watching the word-for-word -word retelling of the Heike story, it really follows Biwa as she trudges through this historical period and encounters everything that happens. 
But the thing I want to mention most of all about Hick and Monogatari, what I personally felt instinctively engrossed by, was the atmosphere. If you couldn't tell by the art style, this anime is produced by Science Saru, the studio behind Devilman Crybaby and Ping Pong the Animation, among others, which is renowned for their very unique, almost cartoonish, and incredibly dynamic animation style. What it loses in, I suppose, realism, it gains in each of their anime's ability to really capture a full range of emotions and feelings in the characters that are drawn. Not to mention the anime is directed by Yamada Naoko, a director behind very famous anime like K-On! and A Silent Voice. So the cast behind Heike Monogatari is very strong, which is why it's very surprising to me that such a gorgeously created anime is pretty unpopular and unheard of this season. Combined with the OST, Heike Monogatari really makes me feel like I'm witnessing myself how the Heike lived, what it was really like back then. Which sounds cheesy, but with the exception of really great anime like Mushishi, there's very few anime that have had such an entrancing atmosphere, in my opinion. The close attention to characters' facial expressions. The inclusion of the environment in many of the shots, in establishing a world. The focus that is less on the actual characters, but instead the lives that they are living within this anime. I also think just the story itself is super interesting. To be fair, it does get complicated at times, mainly at the very beginning where you don't really know any of the characters' names, but the anime kind of expects you to. But once again, I'll mention that the anime's ability to draw on so many different storylines while still making each character feel distinct and developing each of them is really well done. Something I do attribute to the great cast working on the series. For example, just look at Shigemori and his family. Following Biwa, we witness small stories and pieces about each of these family members unravel. Tokuko, Shigemori's sister who must marry into the royal family to bear a child for the sake of the Heike's political power. Being forced to marry only a boy years younger than her, but at some point finding that she did end up falling in love with him. Koremori, Shigemori's oldest son who always felt more at home with the arts and poetry, but must rise to meet the expectations placed on him as a political figurehead and deal with the treachery and horrors of war. Of course, Shigemori, the son of the head of the Heike clan, who faces a difficult internal struggle as he decides whether the emperor of Japan, who the Taira clan owe their power to, or his father, the head of the clan, is more important to him once they start warring. Shigemori is someone who can't ignore the horrors of war that he constantly sees, who never gets power hungry and who fights for the pride of his clan rather than its glory or fame. But we also see whether those morals can survive in such a cutthroat and dangerous society. These are only a few among many of Heike Monogatari's most important characters and the stories they share. Only six episodes into the series, this is somehow only a sliver of everything that has happened. Each character has such interesting personalities to them, and having them in such a beautifully crafted world is the makings of an incredible anime, even if it never receives that credit. I recommend watching it, uh, getting through the first couple episodes might be difficult, but do it, even if it gets confusing at times, and I think it'll pay off. Tell me what you think, and as always, this has been the Anime Culture Corner. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future in-depth show manga and character analyses.